just need it when I'm I, 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 You're fine. You're fine, Mr. There are several of us who are not with us this morning. The women are at women's camp at Lador. I've seen some pictures. Seems like they're enjoying their weekend. But we are here together to worship the Lord as a family together. We are his people. The announcements listed in the program. I don't think I need to go day by day. But we do want to go through some screens to make sure everybody understands upcoming things. Friday is National Donut Day. 
The staff here is working on a plan to visit our first responders and deliver donuts to them with information about the Salvation Army and why Donut Day is important in the Army's history. In case you don't know, the Salvation Army is the organization that brought donuts to the United States. We made donuts in World War II, and when those guys came home, they wanted donuts, so we continued to give them donuts. Um, it's a long story, but it's all from the war and the Salvation Army's work in the war. That weekend also is commissioning weekend. Several will be there. Um, those of us who are here, there are cards in the back with information for the weekend. Uh, there's a lot that happens over commissioning weekend. We call it commissioning weekend because that's what happens Sunday morning, but there's also stuff. Friday evening, there's a concert with Taya. If you want to watch it, they'll be streaming the concert. Um, Saturday is Star Search competitions with the kids from across the territory. There's no way to ex explain the craziness that is Territorial Star Search. There's a couple thousand people running from room to room to room to room to room all over this monster hotel building for these competitions. It's kind of fun. <laughs> And then there's the Star Search Awards Ceremony at 4 o'clock. None of that is streamed. If you want to experience it, you have to go to Hershey. Uh, and then next Sunday is commissioning when the cadets are commissioned as new lieutenants, new pastors in the Salvation Army. Uh, the meeting actually starts at 9.30. I'm planning to be here. I'll start the stream at 9.30. So if you want to come see the entire thing and experience it all, be here about 9.30 when the meeting starts so that you know the beginning of the meeting is a very solemn time. It is very thoughtful, very slow and meditative as these cadets give themselves to God in ministry, and they are ordained as pastors and commissioned as Salvation Army officers. Somewhere along the way, the meeting changes focus and atmosphere, and it turns into a celebration. And the celebration is watching these new lieutenants go across the stage, and we all get to find out together where their first core appointment will be. Um, it's an exciting time. I'll start to stream about 9.30 next Sunday. Next screen. <laughs> There's a lot of screens back there. Um, next Thursday is Salvation Army Day at Knobles. If you're going, you probably already know that. We'll see you when we get there. <laughs> Saturday, June 29th is the summer auction for the young adults, the teens. Um, Come buy some stuff. Make sure they have money to pay for their program. Next screen. <laughs> Vacation Bible School is July 22nd to the 26th, but this Wednesday and several Wednesdays after are planning meetings prep time so that everybody's working together as a team doing effective ministry at Bible School. So be here Wednesday evening. What is it, 6.30? 6 to 7.30. 6 to 7.30. I don't know. I can't remember that. I need to see it in my phone. Um, so 6 o'clock to 7.30 Wednesday, be here if you're helping with Bible school. That's the end of the screens. <laughs> and Gloria is not here, so I don't think she has chosen ushers for this morning. Somebody want to jump up? I've got one. Kaylin wants to do it. Okay. <laughs> Let's pray. God, we thank you because you are an amazing God who takes amazing care of us. Unfortunately, we often take it for granted. Help us during this moment to be truly grateful for your care and providence and to give you our tithes and our offerings of love this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
The psalmist declares, Lord, you have searched me and know me. Will you open yourselves to be searched by God this morning? God searches you, knows you, and loves you, and invites you to search out God in return. Will you seek the heart of God this morning? The triune God who creates all and knows all is revealed in running rivers and fluttering butterflies, in warm sunshine and the smell of the earth. Will you pay attention this morning? Open our hearts today to encounter your love, your holiness, and your glory that create and sustain all that was, is, and will be. We come today to enter the dance of the Trinity, the all-knowing creator and sustainer of life. I want you to stand this morning. We're going to sing, Be Thou My Vision. I'm going to put the words on the screen. We'll have an introduction from the band. Got to give a moment to turn pages. <laughs> There's a lot of songs in these books, and we've got to make sure everybody has the right song. <laughs> We'll sing on the first and second verses. of the third verse, be thou my breastplate, my sword, my armor, be my protection, God. Verse 4, riches I heed not. We discussed this in Sunday school this morning. Nor man's empty praise, be thou mine inheritance now and always. The only thing important to me is God. We're going to sing the fifth verse together as our last. seated let's take some time to pray do we have a prayer list on the board adriana there's no list on the board this morning so we'll just make our own <laughs> what do we need to add to our list this morning Okay. Um, a praise. A praise. School's over. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the summer, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Woohoo! I made it another year. Um, I do want to just, I know I've been asking, and I'm going to keep asking, but I'm going, me and Virginia are going Friday to stay with my dad.
Let's spend a moment of silence and prayer. There are probably things that you thought of that you didn't mention, things that concern you. Take time to pray. God, we worship you because you are an amazing God, far beyond what we can understand or imagine. And you offer yourself to us. You give us your love. You give us your grace. You give us your peace. And you want us to accept them as gifts. But in order to receive, we have to give something up. So we give you our concerns. In our humanness, we're concerned about these things. But you tell us don't worry, but to trust. So we give them to you, and we trust you with them. We think of Elaine's surgery and pray that you would guide the doctors. We think of Sue and Virginia making a trip to visit Dad. Give them safe travels and a good visit. We think of Lorenzo, who was in a motorcycle accident. Guide the doctors and allow him to feel your presence. We pray for John and Mary and the pain that they're feeling. Ease the tension in their bodies. Settle the inflammation of the arthritis and allow them comfort. And we pray for Jack. And whatever is going on in his system, guide the doctors to do the right tests to come up with the right answers. And we give you the other concerns that we didn't mention out loud this morning. Accept them and allow us to trust you. Minister to us as we worship you this morning. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Song number 647. In case you're wondering, I'm using a song book on my phone. <laughs> Most of you know that I prefer to have the whole song in front of me rather than just one screen at a time. Um, just the way I do things. <laughs> it's an old song written by Fanny Crosby. I must have the Savior with me, for I dare not walk alone. He needs to be with us all the time, and he promises he will be if we let him be. 
So we're going to sing on the first two verses, then we'll take a quick look at the third. says, let him lead me where he will. I will go without a murmur. I won't complain. I may question. We discussed that in Sunday school this morning. I may question it, but I'll do it because I'm following with my Savior. And wherever he leads me is where I'll go. And verse 3 talks about going through life through the tempest and the sunshine. Some days are good, some days are kind of uncomfortable, and yet we can get through them if we have the Savior with us. So let's sing on that third verse together. seats. Psalm 139 is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. There is so much in it that can be so helpful to us. And that's where we're going to look this morning. If you have your own Bible, open it up and get your pen ready to scribble. If it's one of the pew Bibles, maybe not scribble. <laughs> But maybe if you want to leave notes for the next person, make sure the next person is actually able to read them. <laughs> of course, many of you sit in the same seat, so it'll be notes for yourself to read next time you open that passage. <laughs> so a few questions for you. Which country makes Panama hats? Take a guess. <laughs> Which country makes Panama hats? Ecuador. <laughs> How long was the Hundred Years War? 116 years. <laughs> From 1337 to 1453. <laughs> What is a camel's hair brush made of? Obviously not camel. <laughs> <laughs> Sue got it. <laughs> Sue's got it. Squirrel fur. Uh -oh. <laughs> 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 
The Canary Islands are named after what animal? A dog. <laughs> Insularia Canaria, which is island of the dogs. Um, what color is a purple finch? Yellow. Red. <laughs> Where are Chinese gooseberries from? The USA. New Zealand. How long did the 30 years war last? 30 years. 18. Come on, I told you the answer. It's 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> See, knowledge is limited, knowledge is tricky, things we think we know, we don't know, we're wrong often, but God knows everything all the time, and he's never wrong. God, we thank you for your word, all that we can learn from it. Teach us this morning to trust in you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to look at the first few verses. She has verse one on the screen. She says, finally, <laughs> Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know, when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. We're going to stop there. What do we see here? God sees everything. The term we use for that is omniscience, omni-science, all science, all knowledge. God knows everything. He is omniscient. So if he knows everything, what does he know about you? Think about that for a moment. He knows everything about you. Verse 1 says he has searched you. This isn't just kind of knows you. This is an in-depth knowledge. I often say that I have a basic concept of how these things work. But in reality, no, I don't. These things make no sense to me. I talk into this little hole, and it takes my voice and does what? Somehow or another turns into millions of little pieces and sends them in the air somewhere. What? Somehow or another, that goes to some piece of metal out on some hill somewhere that sends it around and somehow or another puts it in the air again so that your little thing can pick it up and put all the millions of pieces back together, and you hear what I say. Does that make any sense at all? See, I kind of understand it. I know how to push the buttons and make it do it. I don't understand how it works. It makes no sense to me at all. See, there are some things we kind of know, including ourselves, but we don't really know as well as we think we do. But God searches us. And he knows us. Verse 2 says he knows when we sit and when we rise. Now, this is a type of writing that goes to opposites in a sense, which means it includes everything in between and around. So, it's talking about sitting and rising and every movement in between. He knows every movement you make. He knows when your fingers move. He knows when the wind blows your hair out of place. You may not notice it, but he knows. That verse also says, he knows my thoughts from afar. Now think about that one for a moment. That's kind of scary. It's not just what you say, but what you think. I have never been able to hear anybody else's thoughts. I can imagine what the person's going to say, 
And in my younger days, I used to be very impatient with people that spoke too slowly and clearly, and I would try to finish their sentences for them so that we could hurry up and get on with this discussion. But I found sometimes my thought was not their thought, and I sent the discussion a different direction than they were thinking, because I don't know their thoughts, but God does. That passage also says he knows our going out and our lying down. He knows when we're out doing, he knows what we're doing and why we're doing it, and he knows when we go home and we lie down, go to sleep for the night, and every other action in between. He knows when you're sitting in the recliner watching TV. He knows when you get up to go to the kitchen to get the chips. He knows that you probably shouldn't get the dip, but you're going to anyway. He knows when you're praying. He knows when you're whatever it is that you do that you don't want him to know about. He knows when you come to church. He knows when you stay home. He knows when you put a dollar in the offering plate. He also knows when you put $100 or $1,000 in the offering plate. See, he knows everything. And he knows why. Because he's reading your thoughts. He's omniscient. He knows everything. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And you know what the most amazing part is? He still loves you. None of us want to talk about those parts of our lives that we don't want to talk about. We keep those inside our own heads. Well, he can read our thoughts, and he knows. He knows what's in our hearts. He knows what's in our minds. He knows what we're doing and why we do it. And he still loves us. Verse 6. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. It's too wonderful. It's too full of wonder. It fills me with wonder. It's awesome. It's amazing. It's remarkable. It's unfathomable. Wonderful is usually a good thing. Is it a good thing that God knows everything about you? Understanding that, I don't think we ever will because it's knowledge that's too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. I'm never really going to understand why he loves me. I think I've said before, at my mom's funeral, she didn't ask for much at all. She wanted it to be simple. The one thing she did ask for is that we get a recording of a particular artist singing the song, I don't know why Jesus loved me, but he did. It's too wonderful for us to understand. It's too lofty. It's soaring too far out there. It's too high. It's beyond our understanding. God loves us so much that he wants to know us better than we know ourselves to the point where he searches the innermost parts of our being that we don't even know about ourselves. He knows what's coming up in your future and he knows how he can get you through it. He knows the struggles you're going to go through. He knows the things that concern you. He knows the plan he has for you. He just wants you to follow it, obey him. You know, when you're driving down the highway at 80 miles an hour, what thought is in the back of your head? 
I need to keep my eyes open for the cops. Because as soon as I see one, I need to slow down. You know, on, on, if you use the GPS on iPhone, it'll tell you there's a speed check ahead. That means somebody saw the police car and put it in there, and it'll warn you that there's a police car somewhere right down the road. Slow down before you pass him. Now, we're concerned about adjusting what we do so that we don't get caught. Guess what? God's radar is already on. He's already got you. He knows what you're doing and why you're doing it. God is always watching, always searching, always knowing, always beyond our comprehension. Verse 7. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Is this a positive or a negative? Is this the writer saying, okay, I've got some stuff I don't want God to know about. I need to find a way to get away from him long enough to deal with this issue. Or is this a positive where he's saying, I know I'm a mess, but I also know God loves me anyway. And no matter what I do, I will never be without him. Verse 8, he goes into a little bit of depth here. If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If you get into the original wording here, we're talking about if I go as far up into the sky as I can possibly go, not just kind of where the clouds are, but as far as your eyes are able to see, if I go all the way out there, I can't get away from God. If I make my de bed in the depths, they understood that Satan lived under the ground, three levels down. And that's what this is actually talking about. If I go way, 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 way down in the earth where Satan is, I still will have you with me. You are still there. Verse 9. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, which way does the sun come up? Where is the dawn? East. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I come up in the east, now where does the sun come up over there? It's a continuous thing. It never actually comes up. We just sort of get the effects of it somewhere along the way. If I go and go and go and try to find where the sun starts coming up, I will never be able to find it, and you will still be there, wherever there is, as far as I can possibly go. If I settle on the far side of the sea, now, you got to understand the map of the Bible world. The east is there. What's to the west? The sea. They don't really understand how big the ocean is, but they know that when they look out on the sea, they don't see anything but water. As far as they know, that water just keeps going. The earth is covered with 70% water. If I settle on the other side of the water, wherever that happens to be, way, 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 way over there, God's still there with you. Verse 10. He gives these descriptions, and in verse 10 he says, Even there your hand will guide me. Your hand will hold me fast. That knowledge is too lofty for me to attain. The imperfect, messed up person that I am, and you still love me that much to never ever leave me alone. The word here is omnipresent, omni meaning all, and present meaning here, always here. He's everywhere at the same time, all the time. Too lofty, folks. I don't understand that. 
my wife is not here leading us in worship this morning because she's at camp and she can't be in two places at the same time. So how can God be everywhere at the same time? It doesn't make sense to our human minds. We need to be clear, this doesn't mean that God is in everything. God's not in the rocks, he's not in the trees, he's not in the leaves. That's getting into pantheism, different thing. But he is everywhere. He is around all things, and he is, as the Bible teaches, holding it together. Our doctrine says there is one God who is infinitely perfect, the creator, preserver, and governor of all things. He is omnipresent. Someone might ask the question, so where was God when some terrible thing happened in your life? He was right there, waiting for you to acknowledge him. Verse 7 says, where can I go? Where can I flee? You can't. Verse 8 says, as high up or as high down. Verse 9 says, as far over as you can possibly. You cannot get away from God. God is already wherever you try to go. And he's here with us all the time. He knows you better than anybody else. He knows you better than you know yourself. You know, there's time that we as humans need to take a break from each other. You just need to take a walk and get away from that person for a little while and get your thoughts together, get yourself settled down. Maybe they need a break from you, too. God never needs a break from us. He knows the good, he knows the bad, and he stays right there with us. We as humans have this negativity thing in our thinking. Satan's really good at it. You're fat, you're stupid, you're ugly, you're uncoordinated, you're clumsy, you forget to do your devotions, what a horrible Christian you are, you didn't remember to pray today, and you think God's going to still love you, you need to lose weight, you need to gain muscle, you need to get Botox, you need to earn a degree, you need to, you need to, you need to, but God says, don't worry about it, I love you just the way you are. And as your relationship with him deepens, he begins to make changes that are important to him. See, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. He searches you and knows you. What's in your heart? When he searches you, what does he find? There's nothing you can hide from him. He knows. Close your eyes and pray about that thought. He's with you all the time, and he knows everything about you all the time. What does that mean to you? Maybe you want to thank him for his presence and his guidance. Maybe you want to ask for forgiveness for something that's there that you've been trying to hide. Maybe you want to ask for open eyes that can see him more clearly and follow him far more closely.
I don't think we have the words on the screen for this chorus. But we're just going to take a moment to sing this as a prayer. Just you singing to God, open my eyes, Lord, and let me see Jesus. To reach out and touch him and tell him I love him. Because he's right here with me and I know it. Open my eyes, Lord. I want to see Jesus. You sing it as your prayer to him this morning. Continuing in prayer, we're going to sing a few verses of a song this morning. Simply, search me, O God. We'll put the words on the screen. And we'll continue to take time to sing our prayer to him this morning. Know my heart today. Try me, O Savior. Know my thoughts. See if there be some wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. We're just going to sing these three verses together, but individually. Your private prayer to him. Search us this morning, Lord. Make us truly yours. Now let's sing our benediction together.